This video is sponsored by GAM Alarms. If you want to keep your home and business safe, GAM Alarms offer the latest in intrusion alarms, video surveillance, access control, and fire safety. As an authorized distributor of Hagvision, the world's leader in electronic security systems, GAM Alarms offer the best protection available in the Gambia. Walk into their office located along the San Chabas Job Golderi Road or simply email them at gamalarms at gmail.com or plus 320-960-5714. With food, you can treat. With food, you can entertain. With food, you can actually make a living out of it. This is Seku Bojang. His story is one of determination, passion, and a relentless pursuit of excellence. Born in Kafuta, a small village in Gambia, Seku had big dreams from an early age. In 2003, he left his home to pursue a degree in biomedical science in the United Kingdom. However, life had other plans for him. As he studied in the UK, he discovered a passion for cooking that would change the course of his life. He made the bold decision to switch his degree to culinary arts, earning a bachelor's degree from Westminster College. Seiko's culinary skills have taken him all over the world, competing in 11 countries across Africa and Europe. He has also worked and traveled in 23 different countries as an executive chef for Holiday Inn Hotel. But Seiko's heart never strayed far from his homeland. In 2016, he made the decision to return to Gambia and after a while, started his own restaurant called Spice Hub, showcasing the flavors of Gambian cuisine while also incorporating international influence. In this video, we'll explore Seiko's story, the challenges he faced, and how he persevered to become one of the most influential culinary figures in the country. I was with my grandmother and this grandmother doesn't believe in education. I sneakily went and enrolled myself in Peter Primary School which was far back in, in 1989, 1990. I put myself in the classroom to become who I am today. That's it, then when I did all up to my grade 12, through the Red Cross, I was doing voluntary service at the hospital. Then that got me the passion to become a medical doctor. Before going to the UK, I was also doing some petty businesses. We would buy a truck of cash, you know, go to Guinea Bissau, sell it, and come back. So my first trip, I went, came back with the money I had, said, I want to travel and I want to read and become a medical doctor. So I used my money to do all I needed to do to travel to the UK. So as I got in, I said, OK, I need to work a little bit to, to, to earn some money to be able to do my tuition fees. I started working as a pot wash person, helping out, washing up plates, washing up pots and stuff like that. You know, I was also doing part-time as a receptionist with Holiday Inn Hotel. So with, in this accumulation of getting some money to be able to sponsor myself, then I enrolled at um, the, the medical school um, 2004, University of Surrey, to become a biomedical scientist. Seiko's cooking career began unexpectedly. While working as a receptionist at the Holiday Inn Hotel, the chef scheduled to work that day called in sick. With no one else available to take over, Seiko stepped up to the plate. I jumped in the kitchen and the person who was there at the time helped me know how to fry egg, boil egg, poach eggs, scramble eggs and setting up the breakfast fruits and stuff like that. And what you made that day was good. That's what they said. <laughs> <laughs> I built interest as it was going on and I was able to do stuff. When they saw that I was really good, the general manager came in and said, would you be interested in going to, uh, to do professional cookery? I was like, oh, yeah. I would be. So that's how it came about. In fact, it wasn't passion that drove me to it, but willing to serve. So after I've done my first professional certificate, then now they offer me another opportunity to go and do my bachelor's degree where there was terms and conditions, which is if we sponsor you to go and do this career, that means you have to work for us for two years. I was like, work for you for two years. You're going to sponsor me. And then after sponsorship, I have a job by force. I said, of course. I'm like, so in my country, people study and they struggle to get a job. You pay me to go to uni, and after that, you're now going to pay me to come and work for you. So when I finished my uni, I came back to work for them. But what happened to your medical career? Uh, I'm, still, I'm still looking at where did I left it, because I don't even know where it is. Two years of your own hard earned money. Yes, but at least um, I'm happy. Honestly, I'm proud of who I am today. Yes. It wasn't what I wanted to be, but then I built passion with what I'm doing now. I found my path in it, and I've seen successes in it. 
and I'm really proud of being a chef. I wear my jacket anywhere I'm going to show how proud I am as a chef. My chef shoes, I wear them everywhere. Invited to a restaurant, invite me to a party, invited to an office, I'm coming with my chef's shoes because this is how proud I am. Seiko's story is one of self-discovery and overcoming insecurities. While he is now proud of his success as a chef, there was a time when he felt ashamed at the idea of pursuing a career in the culinary arts. I was going through uni, no one even knew that I'm going to uni to study this. So I kept it so, so low key as if I'm going to work. So all they thought is like I'm doing medicine. Even up until now here, some people still call me a doctor. Because of the way, socially, the way people perceive a man being in the kitchen, that got me that little stigma of saying, I don't want them to know that I'm cooking, or a man is cooking in a restaurant, because I, I wasn't brave in, that, in those days. I've never even gone to a graduation. If I could turn the clock back, I would have gone and buy fireworks, make sure people know that uh, I'm going on a graduation to become chef. So when did your family find out and how did they react? Especially uh, your mom. Yeah, my mom <laughs> still sometimes will just pick on me. So you travel all the way to UK to come <laughs> to become a, chef, a cook. I'm like, yes, why did you come to me? Let me teach you how to cook. I'm like, hey, mom. I still believe that she's still is not really proud as she would have been if I was a medical doctor. So that's still there, but we just take it as a banter. Does that make you feel any bad? No, I am, I, I'm no, not at all. I'm really proud of myself, of what I've done and what I'm doing still. Seiko's decision to return to Gambia after achieving success abroad was driven by a deep-rooted desire to share his culinary expertise with his community. I've always wanted to come home since back in 2006. I started 2008. I wanted to come 2012. I wanted to come. It has never been possible. So now I'm home. I'm home for good. This is my country. Our flag needs to be up there through food. It can only start from one person, and that is me. I believe I can inspire young ones. I believe I can also make a living in my own country, not having to worry about anything else because in a foreign country no matter how successful you get mm -hmm. you're still wary of where to watch and what to, where to step your foot so but homeland is just great so that was my inspiration but then uh, down the line it wouldn't work so I went I uh, had a job in Nigeria working for a very very top person there I didn't find it so interesting so I think I uh, must have been there for only one week I said to him I'm going back I said, what is it I said, I'm not feeling it. Then he took me to his, one of his hotels called Mantis Hotel in Joburg, in Johannesburg, in, uh, in South Africa. I said, um, I have to go back to the Gambia because there's something missing in me. So I have to return back. So if it was the money, mm -hmm. I think I would have made more money in Europe and Abuja because Abuja was paid in dollars. And then I had to leave that to come home mm -hmm. where you don't even get half or quarter of that. And now I am loving it that I'm home. And I'm hoping that people will emulate this, to take the rest to come home and let's explore what home has got to offer. So when you came back, then how did you get to a point that you started Spice Home? First of all, I started uh, working as, uh, as an executive chef at Senegambia Beach Hotel. Through that, I was still inspiring young ones. I trained two young, youngsters to represent the Gambia uh, on international junior chef competition. I had the opportunity to work for Tamala and Kalimba Hotel. So when COVID came, we were all made uh, redundant. So it's about two years I didn't work. Then I realized that I need to come up with my own thing. But if I'm to open my own thing, I have to be different and I have to still push the Gambian cuisine up by bringing our home to a table, our street to a restaurant, which is the gastronomy. And this is how the inspiration of Spice Up came about. One, I have to be able to train youngsters who, like for instance, now I'm here having an interview. Someone is running there who is a trainee, and I'm not even worried about it because I know the person is doing well. I am using our indigenous Gambian ingredients to produce meals. When it's say gastronomy, it's food and culture. So linking food, your tradition and your culture, the, ma the mode of pr pr uh, preparation to the presentation, taste and palate. Spice Up is all about rekindling our old memories towards our great foods that we miss. Like for instance, today you go to Spice Up, Ebe, Ebe from the street, but when you come to Spice Up, the way it's plated is different. You come to Spice Up with ground soup, different. Even churagete, different as Spice Up, because churagete at Spice Up is deep fried. So you're giving you a sense of international food through your own food. Churagete is served as a dessert at Spice Up. Mono is presented as the dessert at Spicer. Domoda, the Benachin, all of these are our own. 
and we need to literally have them in our restaurants. The watermelon seeds, the pumpkin seeds, papaya seeds and all these are great and we don't really know how to use them. I am using them in my seasonings. The seasonings are all the normal seasoning that our forefathers have been using, the salt and the pepper. And the, the, the black pepper, the, the, the chili, dry one, blend them together, in the garlics and stuff like that. The citrus spice that goes with it is extraction of kaba, extraction of a tall, lime or lemon juice. Then also I'm adding fresh um, cucumber just to give them a bit of a crunch. I want people to experience the freshness, the flavors of Gambia that we, uh, we, we missed. Now we're crying about diabetes. We're crying about hypertension when we have all of this um, around us, but we're not making the best use of them by just eating rice, bread, rice, bread, rice, bread. Rice, bread, rice, bread, our forefathers didn't know this, and they lived a stronger, healthier, and a better life than us. Findi now is one of the most expensive grain. It's called the wall super grain. We have it here, why are we not using it? We have the, the kus, why are we not using it? You know the benefit of them? They are gluten free. Gluten is a protein found in some flowers, and this gluten can trigger allergens, intolerances, and also can, can also settle in as fat, and that's what's found in bread, which is not found in the millet, it's not found in the findi. And then they are good for us, so why can't we go back to them? This is why our forefathers lived a stronger life. While Spice Hop may not have a flashy high-end appearance, its reputation for serving outstanding food has attracted a clientele of the highest caliber. I know I do have high caliber of uh, clientele, ministers, ambassadors, foreign diplomats and foreign representatives and the look of the restaurant doesn't match the clientele but the experience gained through food matches the clientele. So it's the food that is driving the business, not the looks of the business. Seiko's accomplishments in the culinary world are nothing short of remarkable. With hard work, dedication and natural talent for cooking, Seiko has achieved a great deal in his career. We did a chef competition within the hotels I was working for, which is the Intercontinental Hotel Groups competition. And I came first on that, so I was really happy. Then I, I entered into Berkshire cooking competition in 2009, and I, I came out number one as well. So I won a few hours in the UK. Then um, I didn't know there was somebody who was watching what I was doing with food. And he was the chef for one of the top chefs called Heston Blumenthal. Came to me and said, hey, uh, would you be interested in coming to work for the Fat Duck, which is uh, one of the world's renowned restaurant in Bray. So I'm like, oh, wow, okay. So he took me. Then I signed up for an agency work wherein I'm able to learn more. So I started working as the uh, chef at the Royal Ascot. I did uh, the Royal Chelsea Flower Show. I did the, the Open Golf Championship. I do the Hampton Court Palace. So I've done all this um, as a young chef from the Gambia, and that made me so proud. I won a few competitions across um, Europe and Asia. Like this one is Best of Gastronomy, which is a, it's a French-based, brother, what they call it, um, gastronomy, which is more to do with food and culture. And after winning the gold medal, then I was awarded as the, uh, the ambassador of Best of Gastronomy for the Gambia. Then in that, I also had to bring in young Gambians also to, to become, in fact, right now as we speak, Gambia is having six gold medals, the only country within the whole of Africa with six gold medals. So I mean, I'm, I'm very happy that I have led the team to achieve that as six gold medals in one country in Basel Gastronomy.
Mariam ate everything. While Seko has achieved remarkable success as a chef, he has also had to face numerous challenges along the way. One of the biggest challenges he faces is the lack of support. When I reach in any country, I pull out my own pocket money. Whilst representing my country, if I go with the team, I'm the one responsible for their feeding and their accommodation. All this travel I've done, if I needed 10 tickets, maybe I'll get three or four tickets. And every country that representing their country, they will come with 30 people, 20. The Gambia has never gone more than even four. I will write letters for support, just for tickets. In fact, I've never added to say A, B, C, I said tickets. I mean, the first one, Sekuba Alcamba Al 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 Tours, he gave us the four tickets on loan. When we came back, we have, it took us nearly six months before I could pay him back, which I'm so appreciative and grateful that he could go that far. That was a great support. When it comes to the ministry, two tickets. Ministry of Tourism. We are through the Ministry of Tourism to go and market destination Gambia through food. All they need is just to pay or to buy us tickets. We never ask for DMs. When I was to go to uh, Liberia, yes, GTHI got me one ticket. GT bought three tickets. And the other one, I bought it myself to go and represent the Gambia. Only tickets. I even asked for a flag, Gambian flag. I couldn't get it from the Ministry of Tourism. I had to go out, rich, put on my status, where can I get a Gambian flag? Within two days, that's when I was able to, get, uh, to buy a, a Gambian flag from two people. Our association doesn't even have a, an office. I've applied, I've wrote letters to the ministry, they could not even give us an office space. On this channel, we always talk about different ways to improve the Gambian economy. And one avenue that shows tremendous potential is food tourism. By promoting Gambian cuisine, the country can tap into a growing market of travelers who are seeking authentic culinary experiences. Food tourism has the power to promote cultural exchange and preserve traditional culinary practices that may be at risk of disappearing. If you support us or me to go with a team, I'm exposing Gambians to what's going on outside there, to, for them to go and study and come home and make the best use of it and make our country better. They don't understand that. Tourism ministry should be really interested in food tourism to our country. We are going out there to market our Gambian dishes because whenever there's a competition, we don't cook any other dish other than the Gambian dishes. The damada, the churagete, the rui, the mbahal, the this, the benachin. These are what we present to tell people, hey, come to Gambia, we have good food. It's not the SSS, the sun, sign, and whatever smile that we have in the Gambia. That's not the only thing that we got to offer. Food tourism is one of the biggest that other countries are indulging in. I am now the director of programs for African Chefs Alliance. I am the president of the Gambia Chef Association. I am the chairperson for African Chefs, um, uh, West African Chefs Associations. And I'm also the ambassador of Best of Gastronomy. So all this on my shoulder, there must be a reason for this. So why is my country not coming to work with me so that we can make this bigger? I want to bring food festival to the Gambia next year, wherein all these West African countries will come to the Gambia. But would I succeed? I don't know. So with all these achievements, all these accolades, all these titles, do you think your country knows who they have? Do they value you? I don't think so. I haven't even been, give, been called by either the Ministry of Tourism or by the, by the state to come and say thank you or well done or to, to actually present my trophies or my accolades to them. My trophies are just lying there, spies of getting dusty every day. I just have to wipe them. They're like uh, part of the, 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 the decorations of Spice Up, but they don't belong to me. Those should have been articles that, uh, that should be in the market. The GT board should be part of it. The Ministry of Tourism should be part of it. The Ministry of Tourism could say, look at what the Gambia has done, because I've never seen in any brochure to market these uh, successes about our Gambian food in the Gambian books of tourist information. And it should be. And I'm here to stay. I'm not going anywhere. I'm here to make a living. I'm here also to develop my young Gambians. I'm here also to push gastronomy up and to make Gambia a tourism destination zone through food. <laughs>